All right, we're here with Harvey Smith, the creative director on Dishonored 2. Uh, we just had a chance to check out the game. Um, one thing that I had to ask, um, how exciting was it going into this one knowing that your protagonist was going to have dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were really psyched about Emily and Corvo talking. Uh, we had Corvo as a silent protagonist in the first game, and we heard a lot of fan feedback that they loved Corvo, but he was a little cold and mechanical. They wanted to know how he felt about things. So for Emily, we found Erica Luttrell, who's an amazing actress. For Corvo, we went after Stephen Russell, who played Garrett in the original Thief. He brings this kind of like world-weary man who's seen too much kind of quality. They both do an amazing job. Having voice protagonists not only gives you a sense of their emotional reaction to what's going on around them, but you can also have them clue the player in. Like, you know, you'll, you'll come to the top of a building, look out in the distance, and they'll say, ah, it's the Jindosh Mansion. And the player goes, ah, I made it. I reached the Jindosh Mansion. And further, in our game, we're very uh, dynamic based on what you've done. And so we can have an object in the world, let's say a painting hanging on the wall. And if you're playing very violently, the, the comment from the player character can be very cynical. If you're playing uh, ghost-like and no one's even seen you, you haven't killed anyone, broken anything, fired a gun or whatever, then the comment from the player as they comment on this painting can be very optimistic. We try to reflect the personality of the protagonist based on how you're playing. Now, uh, one thing that you didn't mention during the Q&A, which I, f I found the most interesting, was the, the chaos system and how, you know, back uh, on the first game, it was more like, oh, you kill X amount of people, this is what you get at the end. Can, yeah. you, can you give us more details so the audience can learn about it? Yeah, so uh, the chaos system is intended to, like, let the game reflect how you're playing. Uh, but we got some feedback from players in the first game that it was a little too binary kill less than 20% of the people in the world and you get the more optimistic ending. Uh, kill more than 20% of people and you get a cynical, darker ending. I think both endings are valid. Like if I play very violently, I want to feel like the city is burning at my back. Uh, but nonetheless, we choose a more nuanced approach this time. So first of all, we have a number of endings. So there are four stages to the ending. Each one has variations based on branches of how you've played, like who you sided with, who you killed, which faction you supported. And then on top of that, all of the possible end games have a kind of like more cynical or more optimistic uh, version of each based on how you've been playing. And then further, it doesn't come down to just like X percent of people I've killed. Each person in the world is dynamically assigned uh, a kind of morality, either sympathetic, guilty, or murderous. And each one of those contributes more or less to the final chaos score. Now, um Right around your launch time, right? So we're right around the corner, basically two months away, more or less. Not even, not even oh, a little more, a little more than a month away at this point. Um, there's new hardware in these weeks, right? So we have a virtual reality stuff from Sony, but also a little more beefed up PS4 Pro. We had a chance of playing this on PC today with some Xbox controllers. Um, have you guys thought about, you know, you know, patching in that enhancement for a PS4 Pro, let's say? Uh, yeah, we were showing the game today off on a, a PC with an Xbox controller. But uh, I've played on Xbox One, I've played on PS4, I've played on PC. Uh, you know, all of them are interesting, different platforms. And just like last time, I always tell people, play the one that you're most comfortable with, that you're most excited with. Um, that said, we haven't announced anything uh, related to any new hardware updates. Okay. Um, I guess to close things out, um one thing that I, I, the common theme that I kept hearing over and over, and I think was super important, was fan feedback. How much did that shape this overall experience going into Dishonored 2? Well, it's a tricky balance, right? Because on one hand, uh, Arcane Studios has a long history, me and Rafael Colantonio and all the people we work with, of uh, making a particular kind of game, a first person, uh, first person immersive game that also has a narrative layer, you know, where you feel, really feel like you're exploring the world. At the same time, fan feedback you know, is very important to us. So we're simultaneously driven by our own creative passions and the, the principles of the company, the organizing uh, passion of the company, but we also listen to fan feedback. We watch streamers, uh, we watch Twitch, you know, we, we look at YouTubers, uh, you know, we, we talk to people on Twitter, we read forums, Reddit, all that stuff. So uh, we've been greatly influenced by what the, the players have been saying. One of the things that you said, and this I guess we'll leave it at this, was uh, the thing you had mentioned with the whole heart situation with, with the first Dishonored. How, how weird was that, seeing that play out? 
Yeah, so that anecdote is this. Uh, we have the heart in the game that you can pull out and it whispers secrets about characters that don't know you're there. You're, you're watching them and it's whispering secrets. And we had this whole sub-thread of the community that was pulling the heart out and it was whispering secrets about people and if it said something bad about them, they'd go kill the person. If it said something fairly sympathetic, they'd let them live. And that was an interesting thing that people were doing their entire playthrough, who lives, who dies, based on what the heart said about them. And yet, mechanically, behind the scenes, it didn't actually matter. A, a bad person was worth the same amount of chaos points that a good person was. And so we've tweaked those numbers this time. So it still matters when you kill people. Like, we still give you a more cynical in-game if you murder a bunch of people. Uh, the city is sort of in flames at your back, is, is the idea. Uh, but uh, Your moral compass might be a little cleaner if, uh, if it's the bad people. Yeah, executing the, the really vicious people is uh, not such a bad thing.